we have Rita Chaudhary and Cheng in conversation with Nicholas Aizelia. Please welcome them on the stage. Nicholas Idea holds a PhD degree in art history from Sorbonne University. His last three novels have been shortlisted by the major literary awards. So he's going to he's going to be our the moderator of the session. Over to you, Nicholas. So now it's a it's a session. It's a very special session, very close to my earth because we are going to launch um, a book which is uh, about a subject which is largely unknown in India and also out of India. So to, to, we have the, the great pleasure to have as a, as a guest to, to, to launch this session, Professor An Cheng. Professor An Cheng has a chair of Chinese intellectual history at Collège de France. Uh, as a sinologist, she has translated the Analects of uh, Confucius, of Kongzi, and made a lot of studies about Confucianism and Chinese so-called identity. An Cheng has also, is also working as an editor of the first bilingual collection of uh, Chinese classical text. Welcome, uh, and it's, it's great pleasure to have you today. And uh, of course, uh, today, we are uh, launching the book called um, Chinatown Days. This book has been written by Rita Chowdhury. Rita Chowdhury is an, an award-winning writer. She has, among a lot of awards, had the Saitya Academy Award. Rita, you're an Assamese poet, writer, and activist, former associate professor of political sciences at Cotton University in Guwahati. Rita Chowdhury is uh, now the director of the National Book Trust. She is a major voice of Assamese literature and has written more than 15 novels. Among these 15 novels, there is this masterpiece we are now going to launch. This masterpiece has first been written in Assamese, and now, eight years after the Assamese version of it, here is coming the English translation done by Rita herself of Makam. So let's do the book launch. Please, we have to reveal the book. It's a very big book. Chinatown Days by Rita Chaudhary. This book has been published by Pan Macmillan India. Please, Rita, get closer to your, to this book, and let's take some photos. Chinatown, Chinatown Days, written by Rita Chaudhary, director of National Book Trust and fantastic voice of Assamese literature. So now I propose both of you, Professor An Cheng and Rita, to discuss a little bit about Chinatown Days. Please join me. So Rita, this, uh, this book, I would like to ask that as a first question. What is the subject of Chinatown Days, please? You have a mic here. Chinatown Days is about the Indian Chinese, especially the Assamese Chinese, live, the Chinese people, the, the people of Chinese origin, living in Assam and the hilly areas of West Bengal. So it is about how they came to this area and and how they establish a new society and become a part of the greater Indian identity and what happened to them during and after the 1962 India-China war. Um, Professor Chang, can I ask you if you, if you knew this, this story of the Chinese community living in India before reading the book? 
Well, uh, I'm afraid not, uh, not at all. Uh, yes, um, so I learned quite a lot by, by reading this book, and I really encourage you to, uh, uh, to, do as, to um, read it as well, because uh, this is uh, a both a fascinating and a moving story, uh, which happened uh, on the border between uh, India and China. Uh, I have been personally interested in, in this interface between India and China, and I really support uh, Rita Chaudhary for promoting you know, this uh, friendship uh, between the, the two cultures rather than two uh, political entities. Uh, so um, uh, thank you for giving me the, the opportunity to read this marvelous book. Thank you. Anne Cheng, um, you, you have a, a very French first name, but a, a Chinese uh, last name. Do you, can you tell us a little bit more about this uh, Chinese uh, name of yours? Uh, yes, well, I mean, I, uh, my parents also had this uh, experience of exile, which uh, Rita would uh, tell about in her book, but of course, uh, maybe a bit less dramatic uh, because we weren't treated as slaves when we arrived in France, you see. Uh, but, uh, but still, uh, my father always, um, he's at the French Academy, and he always uh, tried to, to promote this uh, um, uh, alliance between, between the Chinese and the French uh, culture. And I think it's important now uh, to do the same uh, between uh, Indian and, and Chinese culture. Really, this is my uh, profound belief. That's, um... Yes, it is probably very true that Chinese migration to, to Europe was not as dramatic as it has been to India. So, Rita, can you tell me a little bit more the reasons uh, why have you decided to write this, this book? Why have you decided to write this very unknown story of Chinese community in India and in a very special part of India, which is the Northeast? Uh, there is a very small town in Upper Assam in India. Um, I saw a few Chinese when I was a college student, and someone told me they came to uh, Assam or Makum, um, that small town, uh, during the Second World War. Then I decided that one day I would write about them. But I did not know anything about their history. In 2006, I decided uh, to write about them. And I went to Makum, and they, I came to know about the tragedy that they faced, about the, uh, uh, the incidents that, have, that happened during and after the India-China India War. Then I decided to write in detail about the, end, the full circle of their the society that is called in, that uh, Assamese Chinese society, which is a part of the greater Indian identity. So I decided, and um, it became my mission to uh, that to bring it to uh, the people who have a heart, who can feel about. Uh, the, the sadness and the, uh, the sorrow they, are, they have been carrying. So that is the most uh, the major reason why I wrote this, this book. Because I met those people, I went to different parts of the uh, this, different parts of the world and in India to meet those people and interview them and try to know what happened at that time and what happened after that also and then where they are living. What, what is happening with them at the present period? Yeah. Yes, in, in, in fact, when we were preparing this session, this dialogue with, uh, with An Cheng, you were um, even quoting the, the word, it's a mission for these people. So you, you feel these people are silenced or unheard? Why this story is not that known? Why nobody has written this story before you? Because now, in yes. fact, it's uh, like 50, 60 years ago. Yes. Um, when I came to know about these people, I tried to find out in the newspapers preserved in the archives, uh, but I did not find a single line about the arrest of these people and their internment. And um, then when I knew that what, that what happened, and 
it is really surprising that um, no one in Assam I met, uh, and, and before I met the Chinese people, no one told me about that, no one knew about that. Suddenly, a big community, Assamese Chinese community disappeared, and no one knew where they, they, where did they go. So, um, it is about uh, the suffering of the innocent in time of war. It is the victims. So, I tried to present this from the perspective of the victims. And you have, you have read the book, of course, and um, as an historian, can you tell, tell us a little bit more what is what the question reason by the book, which has been interesting to you? Well, um, I think it's uh, about the um, uh, mainly, you know, sort of universal experience of, uh, you know, uh, being uh, forced into slavery, or being forced to, into exile, you know. And in this case, I think it's a double exile because the, uh, these Chinese came from the south of China uh, in the uh, 18th and 19th centuries to uh, um, you know, work in the uh, plantations uh, in, in Assam. And then uh, after the uh, 1962 war, uh, the Sino-Indian War, they were forced to uh, go back to China, to communist China and then had to uh, experience another exile in a way. Uh, so I think this is a very universal experience. I mean, you, you, uh, you have it in the history of Europe, of course, and, and the uh, history of America. So uh, um, uh, here, uh, it's, it's a very uh, uh, little known uh, story, but uh, which reaches some, uh, you know, sort of, uh, uh, universal issues, uh, so I think this is uh, definitely a book to read. Thank you. Rita, would you mind to tell us a little bit more about how did you write this book? What was the process of writing the book? So you've told us you've met people, but did you get access to archives? Is there any archives? First, I tried to find out some Chinese people in Assam. I met them, but they were not willing to tell about that, that what happened uh, during and after the 62 war. Uh, it took time to convince them, but they d still I did not find much uh, information. So then uh, one of my Chinese origin friend, he helped me uh, to go to Hong Kong and meet uh, the Indian Chinese living there. And I interviewed those people. Um, they told me about the Indian part, what uh, adversity they faced during this war, and how they were duped. They were told that uh, uh, you, we are taking, a, uh, taking you to a safer place because people are angry, uh, common, uh, that public is angry, you are not safe. So don't take anything, you, are, you will return within two, three days. So don't take anything, take only papers. There were old people, there were children, there were pregnant women. Everyone was, was picked up, not only uh, that entire family. Whom they thought were Chinese, they were arrested. Whom they thought were not Chinese or from in, uh, Indian, they, they were left behind. And when they were arrested, some were put in some jails, and most of them were put in a closed train, they were taken to Dewali internment camp in Rajasthan. And from there, a major portion of these people were deported to China. In this process, the families were divided. Mothers were separated from children. Husbands were separated from wives. Brothers were separated from brothers. And their properties were sealed as enemy property and auctioned. So some people, after five, six years, were allowed to live in India. When they went back, they, they found that their property has already been auctioned as uh, enemy property. And those people who were deported to China, they, were, they went from a capitalist country and a communist country. 
And there is a just after the famine of 1961 uh, or something, and uh, during the cultural revolution, they had to be living. Uh, they were uh, they lived in a, a farm, uh, the, in a farm, state organized farms, Hua Kiao Nong Chang. So they lived there. Uh, that is another suffering. They, uh, people living in Hong Kong did not want to tell me. So I had to find out the realities from some other sources. This is the process of writing this book. It's very, very um, interesting to see that you have to cross, in fact, written sources, but yes. also archives yeah. and, and uh, oral testimonies. Yeah. You are looking for that. Yes. Uh, I tried to find out uh, many people in, um, in Hong Kong and from Assam and other parts, they gave me some documents, like the seizure list, and like their um, uh, foreigners' registration um, forms. And in the archive, I found the letters, the people written to the authorities for different reasons, like to take part in Saraswati Puja, Durga Puja, because they married local people, local, local girls, three generations. Grandmother was Assamese or uh, from other communities, Mother from same um, local local girl, uh, lady and wife also from that. So this is a mixed society, and they are very closely associated with our cultural identity. So yeah. We are speaking uh, about an event which is part of the last century, but I would like Anne to know a little bit more about perhaps a, a longer perspective of the China-India relationship. Professor Chung, would you mind to, to tell us a little bit more about this relationship? Is there any contact? Is there any contact about culture, language, religions, or commerce? Yes. Um, well, actually, the uh, course I'm uh, teaching right now at uh, Collège de France has to do with this uh, India-China interface. And of course, taking things back uh, to that uh, famous uh, a relationship, um, uh, uh, you know, created by the expansion of Indian Buddhism into uh, Eastern Asia. Uh, and, of course, uh, at that time, what was interesting is that uh, China was, for the first time in its history, uh, that is, uh, let's say, around the 5th, 6th, uh, 7th centuries AD, uh, confronted to uh, a different culture, and a culture that was uh, equal to its own. And uh, it was even, you know, China was even uh, driven to uh, uh, recognize India, not only as another center of brilliant civilization, but also um, of uh, actually uh, uh, calling India, you know, Madhya Desh, meaning, meaning the, um, uh, the middle kingdom or the middle country, which uh, up to uh, that time was a designation that was uh, reserved only for China. So I think there, uh, that was um, the basis for a very long um, standing, you know, a relationship between the two uh, cultures. And this relationship has taken many uh, diverse forms, not only through uh, monks, uh, through uh, diplomats, uh, but also through uh, trade routes. And, um, and uh, Rita, in her book, also testifies to another kind of uh, relationship between the, uh, uh, the two cultures, you see, uh, which was maybe a forced relationship. But then um, uh, what, what is moving in this book is that you, you can see this uh, Chinese community in Assam, you know, being totally uh, integrated and uh, thinking of India, you know, as its home, you know. And that's uh, the testimony I got uh, from a Chinese man I met recently in Kolkata, you know, in the uh, Chinese area. And he said, uh, well, I could easily uh, choose to go back to China. I've got uh, family, relatives there, but I don't feel like doing it because I, I feel at home here in India. This is my home, you know. So um, I think we, we should um, remember and uh, think about all these comings and goings, relationships between the, uh, um, the two sides of the Himalayas, and um, not uh, pay attention uh, to uh, you know, these uh, geopolitical 
uh, tensions and conflicts that would lead us to uh, maybe to another war, you know. So I really, you know, I, I would share uh, Rita's uh, mission, I mean, to, to say that we don't want another war between India and China. Thank you. Yes, I think, uh, as uh, you were saying together in preparing this session, we should focus more on positive signs. Um, Rita, in your book, uh, there is, uh, speaking about trade markets and the relationship between China and India, there is often a uh, question of something we drink uh, every day, morning to evening, which is tea and tea plantation. Would you mind to tell us a little bit more about the importance of the tea plantations in your story, Chinatown Days? Yes. Um, tea is the major reason of the Chinese diaspora in Assam. British East India Company brought Chinese tea makers, tea growers from China, actually smuggled from China a few, and they brought Chinese laborers from different coolie depots of Macau, Penang, and Singapore. And they came here to establish the tea industry. So uh, that is the beginning of, uh, that is a different kind of relationship between India and China. So I personally believe it, and, and you're uh, supporting your, um, uh, your person that um, political is very limited and heart is greater than political boundaries because in, in, during the, after the Indian-China war, many Indian women, they left with their husband to China, with their children to China, and they died in China and they never saw their motherland again. So they, uh, the country, somewhere, the heart wins over. So uh, I have met a few of their children. They, they have died in China. Uh, they speak pure Assamese. They still follow uh, Assamese uh, culture. They um, um, remember India as their Janam Jaga, their motherland. They remember India uh, by celebrating India Day every year. It's a very, very moving uh, story also to be cut off, cut out of these uh, origins. Uh, An Cheng, uh, yourself, you have some Chinese origins, which brings me to this question of Chinese identity. What would be to be Chinese today? Is it possible to be Chinese, in uh, one sense, out of China? Well, I've always uh, resented this word identity, you know, uh, because uh, as uh, one of our uh, popular singers in, in France uh, would say, you know, uh, we are not vegetables, you see. Uh, so we, uh, of course, can grow roots uh, everywhere, but uh, we're, we're, we're not, uh, we are not vegetables, you see, so uh, we can move around and, uh, you know, create our own identities, you see. So um, I, I've always thought that this uh, word identity has been a dangerous word because uh, that would, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, create some, uh, some tensions, you see, between uh, so-called communities, you see. So uh, I think it, it doesn't help, you know, uh, it doesn't help us to go forward. And uh, so if I have your permission, Mr. Moderator, and since uh, we have been talking about uh, tea, um, I uh, received this uh, book from Rita, which is a, a, a precious present, but I have a present for her in return, which is uh, some uh, tea from uh, Yunnan, you know, from China. Uh, so back to, to Assam, you know, so <laughs> that's, uh, yes. Uh, It's very, very um, a, a beautiful uh, gesture. Uh, Yunnan is uh, in the south of, uh, of, of China. Yes. On the other side, yes. Uh, identity, perhaps, is a very dangerous word. I, I, I agree with you, uh, Anne Chen. Uh, this question is also raising something else, which is the language. So, Rita, can I ask you something? Because your book, you have written it in Assamese. It has been translated in many Indian languages, and now in English, published by Pan Macmillan. But the people 
uh, the main heroes, the main characters of your book. What language are they speaking together? Uh, the Chinese uh, came from different parts of China, from, um, from, and uh, they married uh, uh, locals, and they married uh, the indentured laborers coming from different parts of British India. So a uh, new language, new dialect evolved. It's a mixture of Hindustani, Bengali, Uriya, Assamese, Nepali. It's a mixture of different languages because it is a mixed society. It's a mixed society. So they forgot their language and they are still in, uh, living in uh, Hong Kong and uh, in the different parts like Australia and Canada. They speak that language. Uh, and that is their uh, link language for uh, when they speak, uh, not in, uh, when they speak with, uh, the, 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 see, yes. people came from like the Hubis, there were Cantonese, there were Hakkas, so there is a link language for them. Yes, in, in fact, one of the heroes of the book is, is saying, because they are questioning themselves if they want to go back to China or not. And she said, I'm quoting the book, who do we have in China? That place is totally unknown to us. From the time we were born, we have only seen Assam. Ma is from Assam. Wife is from Assam. Even grandma is from Assam. I don't even know the Chinese language. What will we do in China? How we will live there? There is a, a question of fear also. These populations are, looks like to be afraid, both by India, with the difficulty to, to get really being Indian, but also the fear of China. What is this problem of fear, according to you, Rita? Yeah, my experience that when I interviewed those people, uh, first thing that they did not know about anything about China, and uh, China was a communist country, and um, still is. Hmm, still is. Uh, that time, it's a newly formed communist country. It's a 62 only. Um, they, um, in time of when they were arrested and they faced the adversities, so they were confused that what to do because the land they accepted as their motherland rejected them. And they did not know anything about China. There was no one there. Most of the people had no one in China. They had no connections because most of them were indentured laborers, the descendant of the indentured laborer. So they were very confused. But uh, some thought that they would uh, be secured in China because already India has rejected them. So they went to China. In India, they were uh, marginalized or sidelined because of their Chinese origin. Then when they went to China, they, they faced another identity crisis because they did not look, most of the people did not look Chinese. And with them had Indian wives. And I have interviewed people, they told me, kya hoga? Yaha, India mein bolta hai, tum China is, tum Chinese ho, tum yaha se jao. And when they went to China, said that, you don't look Chinese, you are Indian. So they said that we, we are nobody's child. So they face adversity in China also because of their Indian link. Yes, thank you very much, Rita. I, I think this, this novel, of course, is very well documented, and it's also uh, something which is really and highly appreciable because you have written this book with a kind of empathy. And I think literature also is opening a kind of space to think about problems. It's an empty space where everything is possible, and when you're facing these problems with a kind of empathy, with generosity, I think it's the best way to fight against fears 
And I think your book, Rita, is a great success. And now I'm very, very happy that the Indian audience, uh, English-speaking readership, can get access to it. So thank you very much, Rita. Thank you very much, Professor Ahn Chung. Thank you to both of you. And I think the book is now going to be signed by Rita in the signing area. Thank you to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the lovely...